All right, so what can we as citizens do to limit the spread of this disease? As healthy people, hygiene. Washing hands with soap and water is the most effective way to reduce contact transmission. If there are periods of time when you don't have access to soap and water, such as when you're on an airplane flight, you can use 70% isopropyl alcohol to sanitize your hands. Now, gel hand sanitizer is sold out in a lot of places, but you can just put alcohol into a squeeze bottle and carry that around with you. Avoid touching your face with unsanitized hands. Sanitize your hands frequently, especially after contact with public surfaces. The SARS-CoV-2 virus can last several days on hard surfaces. So disinfect surfaces that are touched frequently, such as door handles and shopping carts. And you can refer to this link for a list of EPA approved disinfectants that have been proven to work against this coronavirus. Most transmission though is through the air and individuals become infectious before they even show symptoms. So social distancing is the best and most important way to minimize chances of infection. What that means, avoid crowds, avoid gatherings, avoid parties, especially in poorly ventilated spaces. If possible, work from home and maintain distance from other people, especially if they're coughing. Surgical masks are not perfect filters and they don't form a perfect seal around your face, but they're likely to reduce the probability of contracting airborne disease by about 80%. This five-fold reduction in probability is nothing to be dismissive about. The r not rate for this disease can be reduced substantially. If you do get sick, the symptoms are likely to be less severe because you'll likely have a lower initial exposure and your odds of spreading it are likely to be lower because you'll have a lower peak viral shedding. As a citizen, it's your responsibility not to 100% eliminate your risk of infection, but to minimize it to the extent reasonable in order to reduce r not. Surgical masks are perfectly reasonable to wear in public, such as on public transit or at the supermarket. You gotta be careful though. Sanitize your hands before and after handling the masks to avoid contaminating them with the virus and causing yourself to get infected or other people. Also, the supply chain for surgical masks is impacted. So please, please, please do not hoard them. You don't need that many of them. They often come in 10 packs or 50 packs. If you see somebody wearing, ask if they have a spare. If you have spares, give them to someone else. If you don't have access to surgical masks, wear a homemade mask. They aren't quite as effective as surgical masks, but they still reduce aerosol ingress by about 60%, which improves your odds of not catching the virus by about 2.5 times. Still, nothing to laugh at. If you don't have access to a surgical mask, you should definitely wear one of these. Your odds of infection are not perfectly zero though, so you should still practice social distancing. N95 respirators are specialized masks that are designed to block at least 95% of particles 0.3 microns in diameter. When they're fitted properly, which means bending the nose piece properly and getting a good seal around your face, they form a tight seal around the nose and the mouth. And when they're fitted properly, they're about 99% effective in blocking aerosol pathogens. These are what doctors and nurses handling the pandemic need to wear. If you already have one, for example, for work, or a lot of us in California bought some for the campfires a couple of years ago, wear it in public, especially for travel or at the supermarket. If you don't have one, please don't buy one. The supply chain is very strained. You're not surrounded by infectious patients all day and you becoming infected is not as bad for pandemic management as a doctor getting infected. Please reserve them for the people who really need them. But if I don't hoard a bunch of masks, how can I make it through the entire pandemic? Well. Respirators and masks can and should be reused by the public 
to minimize impact on the supply chain. And this is by guidance from the Taiwanese and South Korean governments, as well as the CDC. The CDC created guidelines during the H1N1 pandemic in uh, 2008 about this topic. It's okay. You don't handle infectious patients all day. And if you get sick, it's not as bad as if a doctor gets sick. Save the new masks for the doctors and nurses. And besides, it's not like after wearing a mask for two hours, it suddenly loses all effectiveness. It still stays very, very effective for days or even weeks. You have to be careful though. The outside of the mask can be contaminated, so you have to handle them carefully and accordingly. Also, don't share masks. If somebody else has a disease and you wear their mask, you're going to catch it. The CDC created guidelines for reusing masks in the event of pandemics. In particular, make sure that you keep them in well-ventilated spaces and don't allow different people's masks to touch each other. If you put them in a storage container, make sure that it's breathable and that you clean the storage container or dispose of it like a, a paper bag. Just keep using new paper bags to avoid cross-contamination, contaminating your mask or respirator with somebody else's. Store them so they don't touch each other. Sanitize your hands before and after touching or adjusting the respirator. Um, avoid touching the inside of the respirator so that you don't pass virions onto the inside of it. And you'll know when a mask isn't good anymore. It'll either be visibly damaged or it'll be hard to breathe through. If that happens, toss it and get a new one. The Taiwanese government also provided guidance on disinfecting masks for reuse, and you can see the link. Generally speaking though, if you expose a mask to ultraviolet light, such as putting it in the sun for a couple minutes, it'll be disinfected. As a healthy person, you want to stay healthy. Keep your immunity high by eating well, staying hydrated, resting, and exercising. Avoid indoor gyms because they're infection sites. Get outside for hikes, trail runs, bicycling park or whatever, or use a home gym if you can. And take your temperature regularly so that if you do catch this disease, you'll catch it as soon as possible and self-quarantine before you pass it on to other people. If you do get infected, it's your responsibility to self-quarantine at home to prevent others from getting infected. In this case, you want to have two weeks of food, medication, and toiletries. Unlike for hurricane or earthquake preparation, your power is going to stay on. So the food doesn't need to be non-perishable. Frozen meals are fine. Keep them in the freezer. Compile a reading list, a Netflix series to binge watch, art supplies, tools and materials for a garage or a gardening project, whatever will keep you occupied for a two week period. It'll be an emotional roller coaster, so be ready for it. Now, if you get sick, what can you do? Firstly, employ good cough etiquette. When you cough, the momentum of the cough cloud carries the droplets long distances. Coughing without blocking it is very, very bad, incredibly bad and inconsiderate. To dissipate the cough momentum, cough into a tissue and dispose of it, or cough into your elbow. Do not cough into your hand, as that will result in subsequent contact transmission unless you immediately sanitize your hands. If you're sick, you want to wear a mask. Masks randomize cough momentum and frustrates a cough's ability to carry pathogens long distances. Same thing for breath as well. Surgical masks and homemade masks, if you can't find a surgical mask, also have some effectiveness for reducing the egress of aerosols. They're not perfect, but they help a lot. Do not use an N95 respirator if you're sick, especially if it has an exhaust vent. N95 respirators are effective for blocking aerosol ingress, but they are not effective for blocking aerosol egress. Finally, do not share your mask with other people. If you're sick, you're gonna have a contaminated mask. Don't share your contaminated mask with people who are healthy. And if you're sick, you'll wanna be quarantined. And under quarantined, eat healthy foods, rest, stay hydrated, perform moderate exercise to stay in shape and healthy. If you share a household with other people, isolate yourself into one room if that's possible. If anybody enters the room to take care of you, 
ensure that everybody is wearing a mask whenever you're in the same room with them. You can use this time alone for some self-reflection and to catch up on episodes of your favorite movie series. If you're caring for somebody who's sick, wear a mask, and if you have goggles, wear those too. As a business leader, what can you do to help prevent the spread of this disease? You want to limit the contact between your employees by encouraging them to work from home if that's an option. Host meetings online instead of person. Don't send employees to conferences. Stagger employee shifts to limit their exposure to each other. For employees who cannot limit their exposure, such as people on an assembly line or something like that, provide face masks so that they don't breathe on each other. Stage hand sanitizer stations and reduced employees need to touch common surfaces, such as door handles. And use non-invasive temperature scanners to confirm that your employees and customers don't have a fever every day. You also want to make sure that your building that the employees will be occupying has good ventilation. Keep windows and doors open to maximize ventilation. Ensure that your HVAC filter is up to par, ideally a HEPA filter, to remove the infectious aerosols carried by cough clouds. You also want to provide air barriers, such as cubicle walls, curtains, or so forth, to prevent employees from being able to breathe on each other. Offer your employees generous sick leave so that if they do get sick, they don't feel bad about staying home. In fact, encourage them to stay at home on the earliest onset of any symptoms. Remember, SARS-CoV-2 is most contagious during its early stages. You don't want your entire workforce getting sick. Be very proactive. Make sure that employees who are just starting to come down with something stay home. And finally, keep your business going. One of the worst impacts that this virus will have is on the economy and people's ability to afford basic necessities and sustain quality of life. We want to avoid that. Stay open for business. We can't let the economy crumble or political unrest could ensue. But at the same time, protect your employees. Beyond that, it's business as usual. Next, we'll take some lessons from other countries and we'll wrap this whole thing up.